Hey everyone, Adam Shaw here from Bravura Media Company. Today we're going to show you guys some of the oldest created world maps that are on record out there. Uh, we're going to go through it. We're not going to show you any individual secular views of specific countries. For instance, really old Chinese maps where they think they have the global perspective, but really it's just the mainland of China. We're going to show you a global perspective uh, where they show you the entire what they believe to be the entire uh, Earth uh, global view. Uh, that being said, uh, we're also going to announce that on Tuesdays we're going to have a schedule going on. We're definitely going to be uploading a video every Tuesday, so check back with us on Tuesdays. We might have individual videos on other days, but every Tuesday we're going to be uploading videos. So that being said, definitely uh, subscribe to us and check back with us. So let's get on with it. We're going to check out all these vintage maps right in front of you right here. We have a world map uh, that was created uh, originally in uh, 130 to 150 BC. Uh, it's a reproduction, though, that was created in 1628. The original creator uh, was a Greek uh, named Posadianus, uh, and he put this, this map together. Uh, kind of detailing what he had his perspective on the world. He uh, was living uh, in Rhodes, uh, Greece at the time. Uh, let's zoom on in. The quality of the image is not great, but obviously uh, we can see that Europe right here. Uh, we can see sort of certain aspects of it. Granted, this is a 1628 reproduction of a, uh, a, a BC map of the world. Uh, we certainly can see the shapings, and I'm sure it was altered somewhat, but and maybe detailed a little bit differently. But we get a perspective of the perception of the Greeks when they first made a world map. Uh, in terms of uh, not a lot of places in Africa were discovered, maybe in parts of northern Africa, and certainly parts of Asia. I mean, Alexander the Great uh, had a conquest to go into Asia, and it was very undiscovered territory. And certainly, we can see that. In, in this swatch uh, of area right here, there is there is no detail. There's a few mountains uh, labeled on this side, but North America isn't even a, a fathom on this map, which is just very interesting. So this is a really old reproduction of a map that was from 130 to 150 BC. So let's move on forward into history. All right, the best global map that we have in, in our collection from what we've seen in old maps uh, this is an old global map of the world. It was originally produced in uh, the year 1154. Uh, and certainly, as we can see, Europe is, is misshapen somewhat. We can see that there is a... Uh, Italy definitely has a distinct shape on this map. We can see that most of, I guess, the perspective coming out of making this map was around the Baltic area in, in terms of the Greeks and, and uh, Romans and Eastern Europe in general. We have... A unique perspective on on that, and we have a lot left on the table, you know, in terms of Asia still at uh, 1,100 uh, years uh, after the death of Christ. Uh, certainly, an interesting perspective as well. Uh, it, it just it, it's interesting to see. Kind of, and if we zoom in, we can kind of look at the details. We have different cities labeled as well. What's interesting of this was if you look at text upside down. So the per the map makers are looking at the equator from towards the equator, I guess, towards their perspective. So their perspective is from the northern hemisphere looking down. As you can see, the names of this are upside down, literally. And uh, it's just a uh, pretty interesting map. The shades of blue, obviously, are water. The green, I'm guessing, I want to say forestry? I'm not 100% sure what the green. We've got Roman numerals down at the bottom, which indicates a form of language. I'm not sure. Let's, uh, some Latin influence, I'm sure. Yeah, so, yeah, this is Welt. Yeah. This is definitely a German influence map, uh, and there's definitely some some Roman uh, Baltic influence on it uh, from the looks of it. But certainly a very, very old map, uh, and this nice, uh, I'm guessing, they're mountain chains. Yeah. So definitely mountain chains. We can see northern Italy, uh, an immense amount of mountain chains. Uh, and certainly uh, separating uh, Spain from the rest of Europe. So definitely a cool map uh, that was made in 1154. Let's move on. 
This is a 1490 map. Let's see if we... Okay, let's go back to the 1490 map. This is a map uh, produced in 1490 by Heinrich Hammer. And we can see that the globe is getting more defined as we've moved on to the... Uh, to almost the 1500s. And we can see the the Mediterranean is labeled. Mountains and landscape are labeled. Africa has a unique dip right here. Uh, because I just haven't discovered any any of those land masses yet. And they just think it you know extends downward. I, I like that kind of... It's kind of unique to see that. Uh, they believe that Asia trickles down over on this side. Uh, I'm believing that at the time parts of Europe uh, have have not. They know that Asia is out here, but they haven't. You know, they don't know that the Philippines are individual islands out here. So they just surmise that this is a huge landmass, which I think is kind of interesting uh, to see that perspective. The Middle East in general is pretty well defined over here. Um, as Alexander the Great and all these different explorers have moved uh, eastward and they've discovered all the, these different water areas, these different rivers and whatnot. Uh, and based on that, they've edited these maps that way over time. Uh, let's move on. This is a 1507 map. And as you can see, Africa has become more well defined uh, on this map. We can see Europe very well defined as well. Middle East. Asia uh, still kind of undefined. This is kind of India. This is India. Now looking at this map, we have a labeling that they believe this large swatch of land. Let's go to the previous map. My guess is they believe that this huge landmass, now that I'm looking at it, was India. And they see these little islands. I'm guessing, so I go back on my, my previous statement. They, they did discover this part. It's just not proportioned correctly. Their proportioning on this is just uh, a different perspective. And... They believe this to be India on this 1490 map. It's better defined. Oh, we moved ahead. It's better defined on this section right here. Is India and all these different islands, but certainly a much more well-defined world map. Uh, this was produced by Martin Waldsmuller, um, and definitely an interesting perspective. Let's move on. This is a 1520 map. Again. We've got perspective of India right there. We've got Europe. Europe's well defined on, on these maps. It's because uh, the, the majority of these map makers that are doing these global maps are coming from Europe. So they've kind of figured out Europe already. And Africa it keeps getting more shaped correctly. Asia seems to be a little bit un, underdefined. And North America is not even on the map, really. I, we've got. South America defined. I mean, North America is like the last continent, really, besides uh, Australia that's really getting defined on this map. Now we've moved on to 1570, and as you can see, it looks like Europe, Africa, South America is not well defined. It's getting there, though. Asia is very well defined in 1570. It looked... India is is almost proportionally right. Uh, we've get we've got the Philippine Islands over here, and uh, they haven't discovered Australia yet. It's kind of undiscovered, but certainly parts of North America, the southern parts of North America, not so much the northern parts, uh, have been discovered. But uh, certainly, uh, a, a interesting transition uh, through these maps uh, where we get a really unique global perspective. So. We've just gone through some uh, of the oldest maps that we have on record, uh, and we've shown the transitioning from the earliest maps to the later maps. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, definitely leave a comment below with it. Uh, uh, it. It's just interesting looking at these old maps and seeing the, uh, the transformation over time and... Uh, 
uh, it's 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 really just amazing. It, I mean, talk about it's interesting seeing that they're theorizing where land masses are and how, based on their knowledge, they've changed over time. So, uh, definitely subscribe to our YouTube channel. We're gonna do videos like these all the time where we look at old maps. We so we show the transitioning uh, of perspectives on maps. Uh, we focus on world maps and we do also maps of different countries of the United States of different cities throughout the world. We do a lot of different vintage maps. Definitely subscribe to us. We're going to be uploading videos on every single Tuesday as well as other days throughout the week. You won't be disappointed. Uh, we upload regularly. Uh, comment like this video uh, and I will see you guys soon. Okay, take care. All right, bye.